You know, I love iPods, and after I reviewed a lot of different models on my YouTube channel, it was about time to finally take a look at an iPod Classic. Why was this brick such a good product, and is it more than a chunky piece of e-waste today? We will find out in this video. So the year is 2005. 18 years ago, after this huge block was the Nonplus Ultra, for more than a year, Apple released the fifth generation of the iPod Classic. It features a 2.5 inch 320 by 240 UVGA screen and the ability to play videos, which is why this iPod Classic fifth generation is also known as the iPod Video. Also, it comes in a new black housing next to the already known classic white color scheme. For only 300 bucks, you were able to pick up a 30 gig model and for the cheap price of only 400 bucks, you got double the space. Above that, there was a special U2 30 gigabytes edition, which was 350 bucks. And well, I mean, I really understand that U2 was and still is a very popular band, but why would someone pay an extra 50 bucks for printed signatures on the backside and a 30 minute video you have to download on iTunes and can easily find somewhere on the internet? On the other hand, if someone asked me to pay an extra 50 bucks for a Travis Scott iPod Classic, just a joke. Anyway, I haven't told you that this isn't really an iPod Classic. 5th generation because one year after the release of the iPod Classic 5th generation, Apple threw out an updated version commonly known as the iPod Classic 5.5. With updated features like a brighter screen, a search feature and updated video playback, the 60 gig variant was replaced with an 80 gig variant and both the 30 and 80 gig version were 50 bucks less than the iPod Classic 5 variants. Also with a firmware update, iPod games were introduced. These were Brick, Music Quiz, Parachute and Solitaire. So unfortunately Unfortunately, no Fortnite or CSGO. But at least we got some new things as a pastime. The iPod came in a beautiful high quality box together with a charging cable and the terrible old Apple headphones that sound like a small cheap Chinese Bluetooth speaker. The Bluetooth device is really cheap. Hell. Also included was the guarantee that after just a few weeks your iPod's backside looks like you have rubbed it on asphalt every single day for a decade. Now everything we've learned about the iPod Classic 5 and 5.5 doesn't really sound like it was a huge update, but it was just like with the iPod Touch, iPad and iPhone later. Apple introduced a new good high quality product and with every new update that already good product was improved by a bit. You can perfectly see it in this chart. The iPod was introduced in 2001 and with every year more units were sold. In 2005 and 2006 the iPod was on its all time high in terms of the share of Apple's revenue, which made the iPod one of the most important products of Apple's lineup in that time. But of course there were no iPhones and no iPads yet. But how does the iPod Classic 5.5 hold up today? Even nowadays this brick somehow looks futuristic and nostalgic at the same time, which still motivates me to own one of these. Also with 30 or 80 gigs you get a lot of space for a lot of songs, but of course it also has a lot of downsides to it. I mean it's alright! But first of all you need a digital music library. You can sync to this iPod. So you have to buy all the songs you want to listen to on iTunes or have to pirate them from YouTube or somewhere else. Of course friends taught me about the second option. I would never ever do that and self-explanatory have never done this in the past. Anyway, that's the first thing. The second one is that you'll need wired headphones, so no AirPods or other Bluetooth headphones. The last thing is the volume buttons and this would annoy me the most since I have that digital music library I talked about, which I completely bought on iTunes and of course didn't download from YouTube. But what's wrong with the volume buttons you might ask? Well, they are non-existent, so every single time you want to change the volume you have to pull this iPod out of your pocket and change it here. And since your songs might have a different loudness because you downloaded them from YouTube, this could be very annoying I think. Of course I've never experienced that because I've bought all that music in my library on iTunes, but I'd assume it would be annoying. Actually, in the modern world where everything wants to distract you and to get your attention, this device might be a good option to listen to music without any breaks. It's still as usable as back in the days and it's still a unique feeling to scroll through your library like this. On the other hand, these bricks are still around 50 to 60 bucks second hand. For under 10 bucks you're able to pick up an iPod Touch 2nd gen or 3rd gen, which have volume buttons and for me personally a much better form factor. If you're interested in videos about these, you can click here. What do you think about the iPod Classic 5.5 and do you still use an iPod? Let me know in the comments. Also don't forget to leave a feedback under this video and to subscribe to my channel to never miss a new video again. Have a nice day and see you next time. Adios amigos.